Hello. Hi, Stephen. How are you? You okay? Yeah, good. Thank you. Yourself? Yeah, sorry, it's a bit late. Oh, my uh, little boy fell off his scooter. It was chaos. So. Oh, God. <laughs> no worries. You okay, mate? Yeah, good. So, um, yeah, this is for World IBD Day, which is uh, next Tuesday. Um, just wanted to talk a bit about your uh, experience living with um, colitis, really. Um, How long have you been at Norwich? Uh, so I started in September, I think. Um, okay, cool. You enjoyed about, it? Yeah, just about managed to miss the Man City game, unfortunately. So <laughs> that was a shame. But yeah, no, it's been good. You know, are you uh, keeping busy throughout lockdown? Yeah, it's been, it's been hectic, mate, to be honest. I've just been on the phone constantly and then obviously just trying to stay in touch with players and the chairman and all that stuff. So it's, yeah, it's been really busy. been really busy. Yeah. How, how are um, Carlton Morris doing as well? So how are uh, Carlton Morris and Louis Thompson getting on at MK Dons? Yeah, they've done great. Yeah, Carlton's done, Carlton's was excellent as soon as he came in. It's taken a bit of time um, to get back to speed, obviously after being out for so long. But yeah, they've both done. They've both done brilliant. And really added to it. Really strengthened us on and off the pitch. Yeah, cool. Yeah, Sounds good. Yeah. Um, so um, was it um, 2012 when you uh, were diagnosed with ulcerative colitis? Uh, no, it was before that. It was, it was literally that. just after I signed for the club. So that was was that 2010, properly. Yeah. So I think I signed a loan in November in 2009, and then um, 2010 was diagnosed with. It. So it was the club doctor Nick Nick Wilford who's back at the club now, which is good to see. Great guy. Um, just went to see him because I'm really struggling um, with it after training. Just completely wiped out. Couldn't do anything. Sleeping. Um, in the afternoons, I was either sleeping or on the toilet. Really, it was it was pretty uh, pretty unpleasant time on the toilet, twenty thirty times a day, losing loads of blood. Um, just felt completely fatigued, um, and I just signed and as well, and was going through like moving house and trying to get used to the club and the demands of it, the size of it all. Um, it was bigger than anything else I'd played uh, in terms of crowd and the expectation and stuff. So it was it was a tough time. Um, yes, yeah, so I got diagnosed in two thousand. 10. It took quite a while. We went through every, obviously, all the tests and all that stuff. And then it was, it was diagnosed just IBD. Um, and then it was, I had a really, well, it was getting worse and worse and I was really struggling. Um, and so I had to have, all, obviously, all the uh, scans and camera. Um, and then, yeah, eventually got diagnosed as uh, ulcerative colitis. It was quite serious at that point. It was quite, it got quite bad. Um, so I was put on really high dose of medication, steroids. Um, I was thinking I was taking about 12, 12 or 18 tablets a day at one point. Just yeah. wasn't, I wasn't enjoying that at all. Um, but, the, you know, the manager was good at the time. Just said, you know, get, if, you need, if you can train, train. If you can't, don't. And then I just end up playing really and training, but not fully, you know, just kind of ticking over until the end of, in the last two months of the season. I was just trying to battle through it really. And luckily we got promoted and I was really enjoying that. Um, and the steroids were helping my stomach settle down, but I just didn't enjoy being on the, that many tablets. And then after that, obviously, I had a couple of flare-ups in between 2012. I had quite a serious flare-up. Um, and then another one in 2014. They sort of just kept coming and going, really. Yeah, so how did you sort of initially react to it? Was it kind of a passing it off as an illness, like I imagine a lot of people do? Or did it take you a while? Yeah, I, just, I didn't have a clue what it was. So obviously just researched it a little bit, probably underestimated it a little bit and just thought, oh, you know, it's a bit of irritable bowel disease or irritable bowel syndrome. Maybe it's just got an allergy to something. But um, the amount of blood I was losing, to be honest, I know it's not a pleasant topic to talk about, but the amount of blood I was losing was a worry. It was a real concern. Um, I'd become anemic, so um, just from losing so much. So I had to, then I had to take, you know, iron supplements and stuff like that as well. So it was a pretty scary time, to be fair. At the first, I just thought, oh, it's maybe it's just the stress of moving club and, um, you know, moving house and doing all of that. Um, but then when, it, when I actually researched it and, and looked at it, it all became apparent what it was and, and how serious it could be. And also when the, you know, the, the, the doctor who finally diagnosed it said, you know, it's, it's pretty serious out there. Your stomach's completely ulcerated, you know, your colon. And it goes, it, it went quite a long way up uh, to my intestines as well. So it was pretty scary when I looked at it all, but um, just, wanted to, just wanted to know as much as I could about it. So I researched as much as I could, had a look who, who you know, if anyone I knew had it, um, if it ran in the family, all that sort of stuff. Um, and then, yeah, once I realised the severity of it, obviously I wanted to get on top of it as soon as possible. Yeah, so I think, did you mention you had a colonoscopy, endoscopy, or was it? 
yeah, yeah, yeah. All of the above. Yeah. Um, it wasn't pleasant. I had that at the spa in Norwich. Uh, Dr. Phillips was a great guy. I spoke, I, I dealt with him a lot over the years in Norwich. Um, he's a Norwich fan. I used to see him at games. So that was an interesting one. But yeah, he, um, yeah, really good, really good guy. Um, uh, yeah, had all of the tests over a period of like two, three months once you kept ruling things out. Um, and yeah, the club were brilliant, really supportive. Uh, club doctor Nick was great. Um, really kept on top of it all. And um, yeah, I went to see, you know, Martin Phillips at the Spire Hospital every three, three months, probably. Probably a bit more than that regularly at the start. And then after that, once it got a bit, every six months for regular checkups. And that's when my blood tested at the two to three months, my levels and stuff like that, and make sure my inflammatory markers were still normal. Um, and there was times where that would give me a warning that a flare-up was coming. And I felt fine. And then I'd have my blood test and my inflammatory markers would be quite high. And I'd start feeling a little bit tired. And then all of a sudden, the flare-up would come. So club were brilliant. Uh, and, and the guys at the hospital at Spire were superb as well. Um, but yeah, I've had, a, you know, I've had probably three or four colonoscopies now and stuff. You know, not pleasant. But with this condition, it has to be done. And now I have to have one every, um, every three to five years, I think it is, the last time I was told. So I had one last year. And thankfully, everything seems, seems okay. Yeah, I'm guess, guessing you uh, get put to sleep, right? Or... No. You don't? <laughs> really? Yeah. No, <laughs> you have a sedative, but it's, you know, the um, I'd take too much time out of my day if I get put to sleep. So, <laughs> well, <laughs> sedative, and that'll do me. That's fine. I can imagine that's quite, yeah, uncomfortable then. Um, but... depends, if the guy, depends if the person doing it likes football. If he does, we'd have a chat. Otherwise, it's just it's a little... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, so, so nowadays, is your, am I right in thinking your focus is mainly on um, your diet and what you eat, so you don't take any medication, right? Yeah, it's trying to. Yeah, I just I, I looked at it and I took, as I said, I had a three three really serious bouts of it, and the last one scared me quite a bit, um, just because it was getting close to. It was really affecting me physically, um, and also was playing. And then difficult at times, I didn't want to come out and say I'm struggling with this and that. Because then you, it's almost you're coming out and making excuses for things. But um, yeah, a couple of times I was really struggling with it. And then um, you know I went to see the specialist. Um, I went to went to London this time. Got sent down there just to have a chat about the options. And, and one of them was you know surgical, and I didn't want that. Um, you know I'd, I'd been away of Scotland squad and spoke to Darren Fletcher about it. His was you know really serious. He'd had surgery. He then with nearly two years out of the game. Mm. Um, and it would have been a long time out for me and a long way back I think so that was the thing that really shook me so I decided to look into everything alternative therapies um, acupuncture Chinese medicine Chinese herbs um, yeah sorts of alternative stuff um, and then what it, you know everyone I pretty much everyone I saw whether it was at the acupuncture uh, whether it was whoever I saw basically said you know you need to all of this is great, but you also need to have a look at your diet. So again, through the club, I got um, got sent tested for everything really: my blood, my hair, my saliva for allergies. What foods would maybe ignite a flare up? Um, what foods to stay away from? Um, different supplements to the rest of the guys that didn't have stuff that might harm, you know, my stomach and my condition. Um, so the club were really supportive; they were great with that. And then in the end, yeah, I decided to I'd done all of that and I stripped it back as well and went for you know a whole hog with a diet really he just cut everything out started with dairy and meat and then um got gradually better and then had a little flare up again so i just decided to cut everything out unfortunately it's um it's worked for me so far yeah did your um teammates at norwich like how did they react at the time because i think when i tell people about, about crohn's disease a lot of the time they don't really know much about it which is understandable yeah, i think it was the same it was the same for us so when i first got diagnosed i was literally having to run in Train. so we'd be playing a game whatever and I'd just sprint in and it was like what you know what is he doing what is what is he up to and um just had to tell him when I needed to go I needed to go I remember being at a far side of Colney one day we were doing an old school like 12 minute jog around the whole uh whole of Colney just to get warmed up or whatever and at that point they hadn't leveled off all the grass there was a massive mound of grass I remember I just needed to go so badly I had to run behind there I just couldn't like I, I didn't have a choice it was terrible so all the lads used to laugh at it and stuff you know but and then, well, I guess it was funny because when, I didn't understand the severity of it then. But at one point, they were, you know, they were great. They just, they just got on a bit. I, uh, always battered me for being a weirdo of my diet and stuff like that. But um, they understood the, 
the reason behind it and you know what why I was doing it all and um, yeah they were great and the club were really supportive all the staff and everyone were, were superb yeah and I suppose it's important to be able to talk about it because it's probably more common than some people think colitis and Crohn's in in people yeah I think so yeah. and it's ever since then of the amount of people that have either you know written to me on social media or wrote letters to the club to say that they were struggling with Crohn's or colitis um, and that uh, you know, any tips I could offer them or any help or advice or it's different for everyone. That's a really difficult thing. So what work, what works for me might not work for someone else and, and vice versa. So yeah, I've always, um, I've always tried to support Crohn's and Colitis UK as much as possible because it's not a nice topic for a lot of people to talk about. And a lot of people suffering, suffer with it in silence because they don't feel comfortable talking about it. I've got no problem talking about it. It's not pleasant, but and people probably don't want to hear it, but um, I think it's important to raise the awareness of it because it is, as you said, it's, a lot more common than people think. I think a lot of people really struggle with it and just write it off as, you know, irritable bowel syndrome or, you know, they're, they're, they're allergic to something or have reaction intolerances to certain foods and then they leave it too late and by the time they actually get it sorted, it's quite a way down the line. So, um, yeah, it's it's something that I've really tried to support CC UK um, and I'm, I've been an ambassador for them for a number of years um, and constantly, as I said, get emails and messages from people who are either playing football or want to play football or they're trying to get back to fitness and also just football fans who have said you know thanks for helping raise awareness of this I really struggle with it and when I, I count myself lucky really if you look how severe it can be with some people it's you know it's, it's life-threatening some you know in certain cases and it's also completely alters people's lives the way they have to live their lives being conscious of where a toilet is when you know people have stomas um, so you know, ileostomy. So it's it's really, really, really serious. And um, I think it's one of them things that people don't want to talk about or sometimes often just gets, you know, not laughed at or joked about, but it's one of them things that don't they don't see it as serious as maybe it is. Yeah, you uh, mentioned the charity and obviously um, now is a difficult time for everyone, but for people with uh, these illnesses as well, who maybe their medication might put them at high risk of uh, coronavirus or something like that. Um, I think the that the charity is still sort of picking up the phone and responding to emails, aren't they, to support people at this period of time? So Yeah, yeah, so they're trying. Um, I spoke to some of the guys there uh, two weeks ago and they're just trying to make sure that people are okay. It's an autoimmune disease, so it does put people more high risk. I had a couple of messages myself saying that, you know, people are really struggling with Crohn's um, and UC, but severe cases of it that they can't go out. They've been told to isolate for 12 weeks minimum. Obviously, that makes things really difficult for, for a lot of people. Um, but that's tough. So I think the charity are brilliant at what they do. They've, they've been, you know, I think like anyone else, they've had to furlough certain members of staff and just to keep themselves going. It's a really difficult time for all charities at the moment because a lot of their fundraising activities have stopped. So they're trying to be creative and find other ways to, to keep raising money and keep supporting people. But, I've, you know, they're really excellent, really good people that support a lot of people. Um, a lot of people going through tough stuff and you know now especially with this my mum's constantly on me when I have to go to the shopping or whatever at the moment telling me to put a mask on and do this because she's worried because obviously it is an autoimmune disease and it does it does attack your immune system so it's affected it has affected me over the years in that sense and getting other illnesses you know um because it does weaken your immune system but hopefully people are listening to the advice um staying safe and staying healthy yeah just wanted to ask finally um, being a football manager, I imagine, is a very stressful job. So how are you coping nowadays? Uh, I'm enjoying it. I'm really enjoying it. It's, um, it was, uh, it's come quickly, but I haven't really had time to reflect. Just got sort of rolled with the punches and gone with it. I've really enjoyed it. So now it's just about, I think I'm really conscious to try and keep myself healthy as well. So to make sure I maintain my, my physical fitness, probably not to the level I was. It was as a player because that's difficult, but... Um, for, 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 my, for my mental and physical well-being, it's really important to find some time every day to do something for myself. So whether that's taking an hour out just to chill out and read a book a bit and sit down, or take a deep breath, or whether that is, which most of the time it is, getting up a bit early and, and going for a big run and switching off or jumping on the bike or you know doing a, a weight session or whatever, it's really important to find that balance. And um, you know, I, the first six, seven weeks, I didn't do that. So I just felt like I didn't have time. It was so intense, but it really affected me physically and mentally. But, you know, I found myself going, at the end of the day, I haven't done anything. And um, for my own well-being, after 20 years of completely torturing my body physically, 
Um, it's at a different pace now, but it's something I need to I need to do because I do enjoy it and it's really important for my well being. Yeah, cool. All right. Well, um, yeah. Thanks for taking the time, Russ, to talk about that. We'll get something out next Tuesday across our sort of social media uh, channels. And well, mate, no uh, problem. Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks, man. Right. Take care, yourself, mate. Cheers, and you. Yes, see you, pal. See ya.